What does the disability lifestyle look like? Pushliving.com, an online magazine, is shedding light on what a positive and fulfilling life could look like, even with a disability. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join my community, you can join us on our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. Also, if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Today we're going to chat with Deborah Davis, the founder of PushLiving.com, which is a lifestyle brand and online magazine dedicated to telling the stories of mobility impaired people who are willing to embrace life without limits. Deborah, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. So nice to meet you. You too. I am so excited. I feel like I have, um, you're like this big deal and I've been chasing you <laughs> down to try to get you on Chair Chat. So believe me, I'm so happy to have you here finally. Um, because what you've done with your company is pretty amazing. Uh, and I wanted to share that with our community. So, um, Pushliving.com is your baby, your entrepreneurship uh, adventure, and I want to talk about that, but before, before we go into that, I want to let our viewers get to know you, so if you can just tell us a little bit about who you are uh, and what the motivation behind Pushliving.com was. Being an entrepreneur is a difficult life. Um, it can be very lonely, and it's a struggle, and it's a lot of mental preparation. Um, you know, everything from just getting motivation every day to dealing with, you know, our everyday life and illnesses and heartbreaks and all the things we go through. Um, it's not like you can just go to work and get a paycheck at the end of the day. So it's a lot. Um, but I think it's also worth it because it's the best growth opportunity you'll ever have. Um, you learn to grow through challenging people, um, people who don't do what they say they're going to do, people who are dishonest. Um, you learn to grow yourself, you know, because you have to push yourself. And then, you know, so our, the name of our company is called Pushing the Boundaries, right? So I believe me, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to push your own boundaries. So that's a little bit about that piece. But me personally, the why I got into this is I had a car accident when I was 18. Um, I was actually a professional dancer. I taught ballroom and I competed in ballroom dancing. You guys probably all know what that means. Like Dancing with the Stars became really popular. Um, and I was up in Washington DC and I was working and I came up, drove home from work and I fell asleep at the wheel cause I was just exhausted physically and mentally exhausted. Um, I was being sexually harassed at the workplace and I was transferred to another location, um, which was about an hour away from where I lived. And that hour drive is what caused my accident. And I never did a lawsuit or anything like that because nobody ever thought of that back then. And I was only 18 and my family never thought about that. Um, but nowadays, of course, that would have been a big lawsuit, right? Yeah. Um, and I often think about that, but I'm glad I didn't win a bunch of money because I think that that actually hurts you in the end. It makes your life comfortable, but it never gives you a challenge. It never makes you have something to get up in the morning and do, you know. Not everybody, but a lot of people don't have that motivation if they, everything just comes to them. Um, so struggle is actually a way to grow and be better. So I appreciate my struggle. So that's really what happened. I mean, I basically went on, I went to college after that. It took me six years to graduate because I was a C67 quadriplegic. And um, I met my husband in college, my first husband. Um, I've been married more than once. And um, we had two girls and my whole life was just revolved around being normal. You know, a normal girl who wants babies. And I worked full time through both babies all the way up to delivery almost. And then went back eight weeks later with both of them, got a full time day, lived in the house. I wasn't making a ton of money. I was a nonprofit development director. 
you know, did fundraising and special events. And then I went on to do become the actual director of the nonprofit. So I learned, you know, P and L's and, you know, all the managing staff and um, contracts and all that good stuff. Um, so that was really great. Um, good learning experience. I decided to go into the for-profit sector. Cause I'm like, you know, I should change it up a little. So I decided my first job I got was perfect for me. And they were selling pool lifts. And I actually have a pool lift now and the same one I was selling. So, um, yeah, I started selling those. I became the national sales director, which is kind of a cool title for the first job in sales. And um, I sold a shitload of pool lifts. I was pretty good at sales. But I had an interpersonal conflict with my boss, so I got fired. <laughs> so that was in the next year. And then I got another job right away. And then, you know, um, basically stayed in that field for a long, long time and um, did pretty well. Um, but didn't just got over exhaustion. You know, when you're using your arms and, you know, your, your hands all the time, I got overuse it syndrome pretty bad. And I even got tennis elbow, you know, I couldn't move. So I needed to take a little bit of a break and I did for a little while. I got up myself a power chair and um, gained about 25 pounds from that and started over and said, listen, let's do something new. And Push Living came to me because the first idea I had was to do a documentary about women with disabilities and spinal cord injuries because I was divorced again. And I said, you know, I'm so tired of this aversion to disability. And everybody thinks they can't date me because I'm disabled. And, and it just became like constantly educating everybody. And I was like, let's just educate everybody all at once. So uh, not for me, but for you and every other girl and guy out there who, you know, stop it with the fear and like, oh my God, you know, I, I, can they have sex and can I date them? And are they going to be dependent? Are they going to depend on me and all those questions people have? So let's do a documentary about women on wheels. So I started a production company and I started that process and I ended up doing a magazine instead because there was a lot to talk about. And I found out the Push Girls was coming on board and I basically they did the job for me and I love them for it. They did a beautiful job, I thought, in many respects. And um, it's still a great show and I hope it comes back. I hear it is. So that's my story. And then from Push Living Magazine, you know, we started stock images because we didn't have good stock images. and. And then we started um, a store and we saw really cute t-shirts and cool things that like a boutique store in there. And, and then we did a podcast called the Push Living Podcast on Apple iTunes. And um, we have a travel company now. So we started doing marketing for travel companies and we said, well, we could do it better ourselves. So we um, got a license to be a travel agent and we do group tours now, which is so fun. Wow. Um, but also a huge risk because you have to pay a bond, you have to get licensed, you have to, it's a lot of money to do go into the business and then it gets canceled because of coronavirus. So we were going to Italy actually in June, but we're going to do it again. You know, we had to give back all the deposits and everything. So that's basically where we are today. Wow. And what I love about your company is that you've actually lived that company. So before you created that company, it sounds like professionally, personally, you live life without limits. You're just a normal girl is what you said. Right. And um, I love that because it's often sometimes how I feel, you know, and, and we don't have like a big, I don't have a lot of friends with disabilities. I actually really don't have that many friends with disabilities at all. All my friends are pretty much able-bodied. Um, and I have never seen myself as somebody, if someone were to say, describe yourself, um, I just don't go to disability first. You know, it's, it's right. just about who I am, my character, what I can contribute, what I want out of life. And these are all just wow. universal human desires and needs. And um, I love that you are positioning Push Living uh, as a platform to allow people to say it's okay you can have everything you want um and i and did. don't limit yourself and your mind i know i mean come on let me christopher reed well obviously christopher reed i don't want to use him as an example but there's plenty of examples of people who aren't able to use their bodies and deal with pain and deal with a lot of other things who are able to get through and to make it work it's very 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 hard God knows I know, you know, I have physical problems. I have low blood pressure every single day. You know, I have low blood sugar. So I'm like, my disability is 
and I'm an emotional wreck when it comes to love. So yeah, I have some disabilities that don't have nothing to do with the fact that I'm paralyzed. And you know, it's sort of like, those are struggles that we all have to deal with. I have to eat on a schedule. And if I don't eat, I was in a meeting today and it was 12. I, I guys, I got to go. I have to go eat because I'm going to, I'm going to get sick if I don't eat now. I left the meeting. <laughs> it's like, that's not, that's a disability, you know? Right. Um, right. And the blood pressure thing is constant. Like it's like, then you eat and your blood pressure drops. So guys, I know it's hard to deal with your disability, but if there's anything that you can do that you want to do, that you have a dream to do, the first step is to get your head right and to start believing that you can. Once you get your head right, you have to get rid of all that depression that a lot of us carry around because we're not walking. We're not getting sun. We're probably not eating the best we should. You know, we're not exercising and all those things, you know, help your endorphins and dopamine and that's really important so i can help you we have a really good podcast that we did recently that talks about depression and how to overcome it um, with a spinal cord injury or any type of disability um and that's a good start that thing has helped me so much that with the words that that guy used i use it every day for example there's scientific proof that if you don't get sunlight in your eyes every day you know that you can actually get depressed well obviously we've all heard about light therapy but you know i really there was days when I didn't get outside. So I'm just working all day in the house and I might, I just didn't get outside, you know? Right. So now I make sure I get outside. I, I spend some, put my sunscreen on, don't only get wrinkles, but get outside, get some sun in my eyes. Make sure you do something physical every day, even if it's bands or just dancing around your room or taking, pushing your chair. I was talking to this girl. She's like, yeah, I'm getting all this way. So what are you doing? She's well, I can't really do anything because it's coronavirus. I'm like, can you push around the block? She goes, yeah, I guess I could do that. Mm -hmm. you can push yeah. around the block force yourself because what's happening is you're getting more and more depressed so that's the first step get this right and then once we get this right the business and the ideas even if it's selling crocheted knitted caps i'll help you push living will help you we have a free resources um for people with disabilities um we have a, a page where we can you can put your, your company in and we'll share it as a resource to everyone else we have an entrepreneurs with disabilities page, which you can use um, and you can join. It's kind of dead right now. I don't know why, because there aren't a lot of people wanting to do business. Um, but you'll, you know, sh we could feature you in an article or a podcast. Yeah. Um, we need to bring all of each other up. You now, elevate disabilities our hashtag, hashtag elevate disability. And it's about elevating the whole community. Yes. And to stop, you know, you know, basically feeling like we can't do it and we need to depend on society. And of course, many of us do, you know, I mean, obviously if you're not able to do things, you're not able to do things, but um, those of you who don't want to and want another chance and you're afraid of losing benefits, start a company, you know, mm -hmm. that might be an option. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad you took the conversation there because pushliving.com is a philosophy, right? Push living. It's, and you alluded to it about, our mental game and our mindset. Um, and yes, as someone with a disability, I could point to so many visual reasons as to why I could be depressed or I could start drinking or I could emotionally eat or I could whatever the addiction is or filler is. Social media is an addiction. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a healthy one. Absolutely. Yeah. Our electronics is a distraction. Anything that distracts us from having to deal with what is the actual root of our issues is so important to, uh, to recognize. And achieving our goals. Because if you're distracted, because you know, I think what it is is that people with disabilities oftentimes are isolated and you crave social interaction. And when you crave social interaction, you get addicted to social interaction online. Yeah. So that's that. And then you're not achieving your goals. You're not, you're letting things go. And believe me, I've done it, but, um, you know, I just have to remove Facebook from my phone. Yeah. That's one little trick, you know, just get it off because <laughs> you know, if you're finding yourself checking it all the time, you know, you got to limit yourself. Yeah. It's it. I mean, self-regulate that's, that's right. thing in everything, whether it be social media or TV binging or, <laughs> or food, it's self-regulate. You were 18 when you became paralyzed. I know a lot of people will look at me and will say, oh, well, you were born that way, so it's different. So I want to understand from your perspective, what helped you move through that at such a young age to get to this, like, nothing's going to hold me back type of attitude? I was always that way. I think you just, that's, I think it's personality. 
believe me, listen, I'm not an overly ambitious person. You may look that way on the outside, but I'm really not. My, my whole purpose in life is just to love. And yeah, do I want to do things that are successful? Of course, you know, but it's not like I need to make all this money. It's not who I am. I mean, I'm not that person, you know, where I think about money all the time. I'd like to have enough money to retire and to be, you know, not end up in a nursing home, to be honest with you. Um, that's my financial goal. But, um, you know, I think that people's personalities are pretty much the way they are. And I really do believe that you can change some things about yourself, but there's people who are drivers and who are overly ambitious, and there's people who are just fine, just relaxing and taking whatever. And that's nothing wrong with that either. Mm -hmm. It takes all kinds. So for me, um, obviously I was a very physical person. You know, I was very sexual. I was you know, a dancer. I mean, come on, I had a perfect body. Uh, but um, I'm still sexual. And my body's still nice. And I still dance. And I still have the same personality and the drive that I did then. I just have to put it into something else. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy, though. I've never found anything that, to me, that felt as good and as natural that I could be so dedicated to as I was to dance. You know, I really do. I, I loved it, you know. And, I mean, if you could still have love, though, and romance and all those other wonderful feelings. Um, being disabled, you just have to kind of channel yourself into different things. And of course, you have kids. I have kids, and I channeled myself into them, and that was where the great greatest years of my life and my greatest joys. You know. So, is there anything that you would like to say to someone who may not have natural driven personality, but and maybe just became paralyzed, um, or they've been paralyzed for five years and under, and they're tired of just feeling like this is their life. Oh, absolutely. I mean, number one, listen to the podcast that I just told you about. You put it in the show notes. This guy's amazing. He gives you step by step by step on how to get rid of depression when you have a spinal cord injury or any type of injury or disability per se. Um, so listen to that science. He's done all the research. He's a brilliant scientist and, and he's disabled himself. So no, get the facts first about what you're dealing with. And, and of course, it's, he's going to tell you stuff like get sunlight and exercise and eat well and duh, you know, sleep and whatever, social interaction every day, however you can. Um, those are some basics. But you got to do it, guys. You got to have to do it. And then you have to do something simple, like take an online quiz or a test. Ask your vocational counselor to give you a vocational test. Find out what you're actually good at. I am a terrible writer, editor. I'm a great writer, but I'm a terrible editor. I spell like half. And it's funny that people, you know, sometimes people go, God, you know, she's a publisher. And she can't spell. Oh, that's okay. I can't spell. But I can publish. And I can get an editor for five bucks, 25 bucks, you know? So there, I can still do it. So find out what you're really good at and then find out what gives you joy. And the way you find out what gives you joy is this. You find out what the heck you're doing with your time. So write a diary right now. What do I do with my time? What do I attract to? What do I read about? What does my interest go to? That's what your joy is in. So find out where what you're spending your time on. What you spend your time on is what you're probably going to find joy in. And if you can do something that relates to that, get inspired, you know. And then I would say be very careful what you put in your brain. Because what you take in your brain, social media, negativity, is really only going to make you feel worse. So every day it's a struggle for me too, you know, and I have to listen to podcasts or audiobooks every single day. You know, when I'm alone in the house and I'm making my coffee and my breakfast or I'm doing my makeup, I never waste time. If I'm walking or riding my bike, I'm listening because those positive words can inspire you and you can finally go, you know what? Oh my God, that's what it is. I just figured it out what I should be doing. You know, and you go, boom, a light bulb will hit you. It's that aha moment, as Oprah Winfrey says, and that's so cool. And then talk about that vision. Start talking and saying it out loud to people. You know, make that vision true and happen. You know, bring it, you know, the power of positive thinking and all the stuff people talk about, the law of attraction. It's true. The same thing as praying. It's what prayer is about, right? Oh, God, you're God, you're God, you're, please, please let me have, you know, I really feel the stream is mine. Please find me the people and the ways to do it. And then just start taking steps forward, whatever they are. If it just freaking call me or call you and say, Hey, I have this idea. What do you think? Right. You know, join right. entrepreneurs with disabilities and say, Hey, I got this idea. what do you think? And start talking about it to everyone and anyone you can. 
Yeah. And then you're going to get more information and more information and more information. And then start a business. Go to the SBA, the Small Business Administration. They have free programs for people just like you. Mm -hmm. And um, they have mentors. So you got to start somewhere, but you got to really start here. Making sure your head's the right place. Tony Robbins said something that I love, and I really believe in it. He goes, you have to prime yourself every day. Prime yourself. So he uses a, a physical priming, and he believes that the physical and the mental are connected. So he goes, he does something physical like run or jog or swim. And as he's doing something physical, he's saying positive messages. I am powerful. I am capable. I can do it. You know, whatever it is. So that's priming yourself. Yeah. Um, and you guys got to prime yourself. You got to prime yourself and your mental attitude and, and go get it. Absolutely. I love that. So where can people continue getting motivated by you? Um, Pushliving.com, and I also have a Facebook page, Deborah J. Davis. Is a, I think I have a picture with Tony. Um, I'm with some movie star, I can't remember. Um, anyway, there's a picture of me in a white dress. Um, Deborah J. Davis is my public page. I don't post on it too much. I think the best way um, is really to just to follow Push Living. You know, pushliving.com and subscribe to it. We do a weekly newsletter, of course, of new articles and stuff. And we have an Instagram page and we have a Twitter, <laughs> all the same thing, Push Living. And we have a Pinterest. Everything so get off social media except for Push Living and One Leg Up Productions, people. <laughs> That's right. I agree. <laughs> right. So, um, and what's the name of your podcast? Uh, Push Living Podcast. Okay, so if they look on iTunes or like a cast box or any sort of um, yes. podcast platform, yes. Push Living um, with Deborah Davis. I I am so grateful for you. I know when we chatted before this, I I you know, I'm like, oh, we're like soul sisters. You're part of my tribe. Hopefully I'm I a hundred percent agree. I love you. So I'm sorry it took you so long to get me. But regarding the you're, podcast, you're a busy woman, so I totally I would be honest, I'm honestly the podcast it's not about me. It really isn't. Of course it is. I talk, as you might notice, but it is a lot about the guests and the guests are powerful and you will really not waste a single second by listening to it. Trust me. Listen to every single one. The first one, Sam Morris, the Zen master is incredible. He talks about sex and sexuality in men. Fascinating. Like he has better sex than any able-bodied man ever. So if you're a guy and you're listening to this, and you think you still can't have sex the way you want to, you should listen to that podcast. Say nice. I'm intrigued. And I'm not even a man. <laughs> well, you know, you, you should, girls, women should listen to it too. Awesome. Awesome. Deborah, thank you so much for um, just being here and spreading your positivity and standing for something different. I feel like I said this earlier, but I truly feel like what you're doing is giving people hope and possibility that whatever it is that they want to achieve in life is is doable and achievable. So thank you so much. Hashtag elevate. With help. With help. Remember, with help. We all need help. So don't be afraid to ask for it. Yes, yes. Thank you. That's that's so important. Oh my gosh. You just keep coming out with them. I can't even like oh I can't even stop. Okay. <laughs> But I will bring this to a close. I'd love to hear from you, our viewers. What is it that you want in life? And there are ways to get it. You just have to start thinking outside the box. And people like Deborah with pushliving.com, myself, we're here to help you and champion you and be your cheerleaders. So um, let us know what is it that you want out of life? Um, and again, Deborah, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Um, I am so grateful to you and for everything that you stand for. Um, and to our viewers, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe and share. Share this with anybody and everybody you think will benefit from this show. Um, and if you want to get in deeper conversation with me and my community, please join us on my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed. Mm -hmm.